Before we begin, click subscribe to stay up to date with all of our newest video content. Troy Vars here with the technology tip of the day, CS3. We're going to talk about coding and interface. First thing we want to do is to create our project. So we're going to go in to our Visual Studios here. We're going to create the solution and the first project, which will be the simple UI. Once we've done that, we'll go ahead and add a second project that's going to be our class library for the Acromatica code. We'll be filling this in later, but go ahead and add it to our project now. Once we've cut that class library added, we need to go ahead and add our service reference, which is going to point back to the WSDL from our SOAP endpoint, and we can get that out of Acumatica by selecting our endpoint version and then hitting the View Endpoint Service button, and that'll give us a web link, which we can then paste into our service. I then like to give this a name that makes more sense, something like Acumatica endpoint and the version number, perhaps. Once we've created that web service, you can open the object browser and you can see all of the different entities that are part of it pulled directly into our project. This will become our kind of source model for Acumatica here as we build our integration. The next thing we want to do is to update our app config file to show the allow cookies and to extend the amount of the message size that we're allowed to send through. That's going to make a big difference. Also, if we're doing HTTPS, we need the security mode transport in there. I'll be taking it out because I'm just running into this on a local environment. You do need it if you are in a true production environment. I should probably also note here that that allow cookies flag being set to true is what allows us to stay logged in when we send the log on message. If you're getting an error that says that you're not logged in when you're sending your put statement through later in the code, we'll see that. This is probably the root cause that you don't have this set in your app config file correctly. The next thing we want to do is create our settings file to kind of store the login information. We're going to put in user, password, tenant, locale, and company. And this is really so that we have somewhere to store all of those variables and make them available to the application without having to hard code them right there in the code. Next thing we're going to do is to dump this base class. We could rename it. Visual Studios has so many problems with dumping and then renaming or with renaming something it's so much easier just to dump it and then give it a name right off the bat this video starting to run a bit long so we're going to jump right into the operation here and show you how this program works got a csv file here and our acumatica chart of accounts uh, we're just going to add one account to our list here and we're going to create these three accounts programmatically we're going to go ahead and show you how this works and then we'll walk through the code and uh, i think it'll be easier to see it if we do it that way around so it's just a simple console interface we tell it here to load the files by using the l command it goes out and it loads our three files when we go back and look at our version of acumatic here and refresh, you'll see that those files were created now, 105, 106, and 1050, just as they were in the file. This is a very simple application, but it's kind of going to pave the groundwork for more complex applications here in a second. So again, we got the app config file. Because I do have a class library here, I have to have an app config file pointing to 
this web service in both places. If I was just running a simple UI and with no library, wouldn't have to do that, but it's best practice to split your code up this way, and we'll talk a little bit about why here in a bit. All right, so this first section is just the UI controller. All we're doing here is getting sending an output and waiting for an input and then telling it to go ahead and act depending on which inputs are used. And we just keep waiting until we get one of the three allowed inputs. If anything else is entered, it sends the help message through. Pretty simple form of UI. This is easily replaceable. That's kind of why I want to split this into two classes, with the Acumatica library being the back end of our code and the simple UI being the front end. If we go ahead and look at the back end code, you can see the log on and log off statements as well as a little simple kind of bool conversion. And as we go through here, all we're doing is creating a list of our entity called account and then going through parsing our file, pulling in those data streams, splitting on the comma, which in a CSV file is the comma separated text, and then assigning those and mapping those to our Acumatica entity. From there, we can put in some error trapping and walk through each account and then just put in a simple put statement here with the account soap client dot put account that's really what's going to do the bulk of the work here that's really the bit that's communicating with Acumatica is the soap client that we've created from our WSDL service is going to go through and do that communication again we'll catch any errors and then finally we'll log off the system so very, very simple UI and program, but can be very, very powerful. Was this video helpful? Click subscribe to see more videos like this one.